We're here once again. I'm your makeshift announcer at Pokemon Stadium. A renovated stadium this time as we watch the Poke Cup. Today our highlight will be on a team that comes in from the past, the blue version. That means there are 100 Pokemon and 86 moves that are completely off limits to it. Nonetheless, it's going to try its best against a field that's had three years to evolve and possibly even change the mechanics around it. Recall that's the same team that beat the Prime Cup in the three years ago era. And up first is Carmen, the Poke Fan. See three normals and three essentially triangular types. How do you approach that? Let's find out. Leading off for the so-called blue team will be Tauros. And it's up against Persian. I recall that during that Prime Cup feat when the team was 45 and 50 levels down, Tauros never once got called up. Presumably because it relies on hitting hard, and when you're so many levels down, hitting hard can't be a specialty of yours. Anyway, Tauros going first here with a body slam. That is quite a hard hit. Neutral pipe, and it takes Persian into the red 22. That cannon does paralyze Tauros, hits for a surprisingly little damage. That cannon's rather strong attack, and Tauros not known for its special, neither is Persian, however. A Persian with beef here takes the scope lens. Take note that items weren't a mechanic in the days that this team reigns from. However, there is still a spot assigned to items, so you can put items there. So that's why Tauros had that scope lens, and it takes Persian down. Anyway, up next is Blossom. Blossom with a track here. Of course, Taurus being male, that works. Now. Now Tauros apparently stops to smell the flowers since it can't attack this turn from attract. Now a pedal dance. What does that hit for? Ooh, only 38. I think Blossom with a pedal dance could do more than that. Now Tauros Blizzard, that goes through the attract and the paralysis. That does hit down to 60. Well, as you can see here, Blizzard got nerfed in the three years since this team originally hailed. Its accuracy is now down to 70%, it used to be 90. And another turn of Pedal Dance, and it's a critical to 55! And Taurus smells the flowers again, and can't attack. And the final turn of Pedal Dance... It's down to 18. Taurus does hang on, gets one more turn to try to attack, but can't, fully paralyzed. Goes through the attract, but can't get through the paralysis. Blossom, very wise, using a bitter berry to heal off the automatic confusion from the end of Petal Dance. And of course, Taurus cannot stay in any longer. Who comes out now? Pretty much forced here, it has to be Gengar. The other choice was Rhydon, which you obviously don't want to send out here. Another pedal dance, probably very little damage now, only 18. And Gengar should seal the deal here with Ice Punch. And does. Third opponent of this battle, the Fable. Does the Fable has Psychic? Does it use that? What does Gengar do in return? Ooh, puts up a substitute for scouting, seeing what the Fable has. Ooh, Clefable with an Encore! That now forces Gengar to use Substitute over and over. It does hit through Substitute. 
Now, Gengar does not lose HP from these repeated substitutes, but they do absolutely nothing but drain PP. A Fable Metronome Egg Bomb obvious miss. It has Metronome, highly unpredictable move to do just about anything. Gengar forced to substitute again, Encore still in effect, another Metronome hits Pound, another miss. And Sludge, that one will actually hit. Doubtful it'll break the substitute. We need to hit for 41 and Sludge into a poison type. Don't count on that. Another substitute failure from Encore. Reversal, another miss! So Fable not having much luck with Metronome. Three attacks that can't possibly hit Gengar and one that does very little damage. Gust, that... Gust used to be normal, now it's flying, so it can hit the substitute. And it still doesn't break, and Encore ends. Look at that, took 6 PP away from substitute, not that it matters. Gengar can't recover, so it only needs 3 more. And here's a Thunderbolt. There's 64. Now Clefable again with Encore, this time to much less effect because Gengar wants to use Thunderbolt here anyway. Thank you sir, may I have more damage dealt from your Thunderbolts? Well Gengar applied to deliver them. And seems to like it down to 49th Metronome Spark. Does that break the substitute, finally? Yes it does. But Gengar has to use Thunderbolt and wins anyway from it. Should do 49. And it does! So a rather long first battle, but the blue team with a sweep. Awesome could have put it away there if its third pedal dance turn had been critical. But it left enough health for Tauros to switch out and then Gengar sealed the deal. Thanks to some wise substitute use and some bad luck from Fable's metronome. And here comes the second battle! Now why it again with three normals? and three much less effective types to go along with it. But possibly the Pokemon choice might render those types irrelevant. Let's see. We start. It'll be Alakazam for the blue team. And Wyatt leads off with Ditto. But what does Alakazam have? All very potent moves for a Ditto to be able to use if it gets a chance to use them with any health left, or you could switch. Here's an interesting proposition. You switch to Chansey here, all it has is Seismic Toss for attacking, then you switch to Gengar, it has absolutely no way to hit you. And it doesn't get the high HP of Chansey either, Transform copies every stat except for HP. But Alakazam going for blood with a Psychic here. And finishes off Ditto in one hit, so... Forget the switch proposition, Alakazam just strong arms Ditto into submission and gets a quick kill. And here's Pidgeot. With a Berserk Gene, so that makes it potentially lethal. I don't know what Alakazam would do here. It will Psychic again. Still going for the big damage. And hits Pidgeot into the yellow. Ooh, Pidgeot now flying up high. So there's really not much choice what to do here. Alakazam, yep, puts up a substitute. Guards cutting its losses to 40. Pidgeot with fly. That obviously breaks the substitute, but thanks to it, it can't get through to the rest of Alakazam's HP. And now Alakazam should finish this off in one more Psychic. 
that it does. So two fairly quick kills for Alakazam. And up next is Primate. Unless Primate manages to go first or somehow dodge the attack maybe with a Bright Powder, it has one turn before this battle's over. And that should end it. Alakazam taking out Primate down three levels, but still taking it down in one hit. Now, the blue team is off to a second battle much faster than the first. 6 and 0. Oh. Here comes the third battle against the Fire Breather, Cliff. You see three fires. You don't really see any monotype teams here at this highest level of competition. They always make sure to guard their weak spots, or at least attempt to do so. Anyway, this team should rely on Sunny Day, but type-wise, you can't count on it. anything. Right on playing the odds here, hoping it matches a fire. And it does in Magmar. So will Magmar get out of the way? What does Rhydon have? Does it wanna... Ooh, Magmar being tricky with a Psychic. Not very much damage. You'd expect a Psychic to deal more than 44 to Rhydon. Fighting back with Earthquake, a lot more than 44 this time. In fact, a one-shot kill! And who comes out next? It's Marowak! If that Marowak has a Thick Club, you might want to reconsider leaving Rhydon in. Thick Club Earthquake, that could deal some big damage to Rhydon. And and I don't think Rhydon has any way to take out Marowak in one hit. But it's staying in with Earthquake. And hits for over half. Marowak does have the Earthquake. Does it deal 167? Into the yellow, but only down to 86. So less than half of its remaining HP, Rhydon could take another one of those. But it won't. It finishes off with an Earthquake of its own. But Rhydon rather resilient even in the face of a Marowak with a thick club and a type weakness. And up last is Arcanine. Taking a while to consider what move to use, possibly rest substitute? What? Arcanine going for Dragon Breath. That move can paralyze, and it does here! Right on down to 52. But it does get this shot off. Does it take out Arcanine four levels down in a single shot? Yes! So now 9 0 for the blue team. It's been quite a performance so far from right on um, before that Alakazam. Power hitters of this group, one special, one physical. Against the biker Dylan. 
Shark. And we see a halfway team with half the team being poisoned. But the rest hopefully shutting down. Supposed glaring weaknesses it may have. But leading off for the fourth battle, right on again. Seeing the three poisons. Oh, Venusaur, probably not such a good match. It'll be a mirror match with Rhydon versus Rhydon. And... Dylan's Rhydon is switching out. Apparently, it sees a better match. Oyster. Okay. Rhydon's Earthquake. Oyster should absorb that fairly well. Down to 77. So that's 60. 54 on the Earthquake. Does Rock Slide have enough to take it out? Rhydon's saying, no, I don't want a piece of this. Even if it did have enough to take it out with Rock Slide, it would have to survive a Cloister attack first, which it might not do. In comes Zapdos, and Cloister uses Surf. Critical hit, Zapdos still in the green. For what? Now Cloyster saying I don't want to switch out once again. Probably back to ride on. This could be an interesting back and forth relay. Zapdos with the Thunderbolt hit for absolutely nothing. Zapdos coming back, we'll see Rhydon versus Rhydon again. Possibly to eat a rock slide. It will be Rhydon versus Rhydon. Dylan's Rhydon with Hyper Beam. That missed, and because it missed, there's no recharge turn. Dylan is free to do whatever he wants and decides to switch out once again. Probably to Cloister. Here's another Earthquake. 22. Now that means another Earthquake will take out Cloyster only if Rhydon can survive the, the preceding Surf from Cloyster. Does it want to risk that? No, it doesn't. What can Zapdos do it? Low green health. Oh, it's not Zapdos, it's Alakazam! Interesting choice here. Oyster again using Surf. And Alakazam, that yields only 51. And a Psychic to finish off Cloyster, finally. And the stalemate has been broken by that switch to Alakazam. And Rhydon coming back out. Alakazam with a substitute. Scouting purposes, most likely. Ooh, Hyper Beam! That's a great choice against Hyper Beam! Sure, it makes the substitute. Now Alakazam gets a free turn. Right on forced to recharge after that Hyper Beam hit. Right on in the yellow. But it would be possible to play a game with Substitute and Recover, whereby Alakazam could basically build up as much as it wanted. Rhydon couldn't do anything, but Alakazam going for the finish with Psychic. Leaving it with no Substitute up to take on whoever comes out third for Dylan. We'll find out if that's a good move. 
Kid here is wheezing, so it probably shouldn't matter. Alakazam should be able to take out wheezing in one blow. Unless a quick claw explosion or something, but it's not to be Alakazam with Psychic. It's for the kill! So now 12 and 0 for the blue team. Alakazam looking pretty fine. Possibly to be the MVP of this match. Broke the stalemate here. Fog Badge! Now supposedly Pokémon up to level 50 will obey, which includes everyone on the team except for Chansey and Tauros. But badges mean nothing toward obedience here, this is the stadium! These Pokémon wanna shine and they don't... ...hear about any personal issues except to win! Now here comes Teacher Molly in the fifth battle. This is the Baton Pass team. And nothing on the blue team has anything like haze to counteract Baton Pass. Obviously, Whirlwind wouldn't have made any sense in its own era, which is where this team comes from. Zapdos will lead off. Probably to go for the all-out hard, fast hits approach. And it beats Apom. Zapdos, Thunderbolt! Critical hit! And that'll end Apom in just one shot! So Zapdos not wanting any piece of baton pass shenanigans, ending Apom's fight here in just one hit in the fifth battle. Now here comes Mr. Mime! Probably want to use a Drill Peck against it, given... Ooh, Mr. Mime possibly anticipating that Drill Peck going with Reflect off a Quick Claw. But Zapdos going with Thunder Wave instead. Slow Mr. Mime down, possibly forced to Baton Pass Speed Loss. And now it's going for Thunderbolt, deciding that into the Reflect that's better effective with the, even with the type of severity of Mr. Mime's defense and special defense. And hits for just over half of Mr. Mime's HP. Mr. Mime with a Meditate, I doubt that's going to do anything in this battle. Except Spell Doom for it. And one more Thunderbolt. 40, 30, 20, 10, 0! So that's now 14-0 for the blue team. And we'll see who Molly sends out last in this battle. Ooh, there's Politoed. Politoed a bit resilient. Can it stand up to Zapdos? Can it do anything? Here comes a Thunderbolt. Down to 20, so Politoed does survive a super effective from Zapdos, and fights back with Ice Punch does not freeze, so that means this battle should be over in one more turn. Zapdos with Drill Peck might as well be the pointy finger of Doom. That would probably be enough to take out Politoed anyway from low health, but the battle's over in any case. Five perfect, 15-0. Sage. The Annoyer team. This team confuses you, it traps you, it parrot songs you. 
But can the blue team prove its ability to fight out of any situation and stand up to it? It'll be Zapdos once again wanting the quick way out. This Navis leading off. Zapdos still wanting blood. Thunderbolt. 53 HP left. Mr. Avis with a confuse race, so Zapdos probably should have used Substitute there to guard against that. And here it does. Does it hit through confusion? No, so Mr. Avis does survive to fight once more. And puts up a Parish Song. So it's not trapped, but it still has to face a Parish Song. This dream is obviously with Protect to buy some time. Puts up a Thunderbolt through confusion, but it misses into the Protect. And the Parish count is down to two. Protect! That failed, so if Zapdos can hit through confusion, it can't. So now Parish count is at one, and both Pokémon have to bail out now. Zapdos bailing out in favor of... Gengar! Now what's Mr. Avis doing? Using Protect with a Parish count of one? That just dooms itself! Doesn't get anything out of Protect here! Didn't have a trap in effect! Why not switch? Now it's forced to switch after Mr. Avis goes down! And it's Gengar versus Gengar! Obviously the Gengars have very different fighting styles now! Team Gengar uses Psychic! Not quite a kill! Chen's Gengar hangs on at 11 using Mean Look! Now this Gengar would substitute... ...could easily put the other Gengar away... But it might as well have a substitute up for the next Pokémon, and very wise, it eats up a Confuse Ray, which can't hit Substitute, neither can many other status-inflicting moves. And there's the Psychic to finish up, so Gengar has a Substitute in play. At the very least, that's a free hit and free turn to scout out your opponent, and what does Chen send out last? Psychic, not lethal, but Grobat leaves it in the yellow at 52, but a special defense drop. Here's a mean look. Now that expires after each kill. So Grobat has to renew the mean look, but it can't hit through Substitute. Now here you see that Psychic only drops Special Defense now, not the entire Special Stat, not Special Attack, and it only does so 10% of the time instead of 30 like it used to. Now Grobat with Detect. Thunderbolt can't hit a Detecting Pokémon, so... Does Grobat have anything it can do, though? Another Detect! A 
forced miss. Another detect. This time it failed. And this time Thunderbolt will put Crobat away. And just in case you were wondering, no, you cannot alternate protect and detect and hope they'll run off different counters to guarantee 17 turns of survival. It's the same counter, so if you use protect and then detect the next turn, you are not guaranteed. It's dropped to 50%. And Shen goes down and the blue team improves to 18-0 with two battles remaining in the Poke Cup. Additionally, you cannot use Endure with either Protect and Detect and hope they run off different counters either. Protect, Detect, Endure all reduce accuracy of each other when used consecutively. Now we're in the Battle 7, the semi-final. Now Baxter with three starters, two normals, and a random Hitman, huh? How do you approach this? Alakazam! Hit hard, possibly with stand stuff while you're at it. And here comes Typhlosion to take on Alakazam. It hits Typhlosion to 76, so more than half. One more should end it. But Typhlosion gets in a flamethrower. Burn! So Alakazam would start losing health, except it has the Miracle Berry there to protect it. And another Psychic should put Typhlosion away. Go to 19 0. There we have it. is Meganium. A Meganium more defensive than Typhlosion. What kind of game plan can you bring in against it? Thunderwave. Puts up a body slam into that low defense. 59. 39 damage from the body slam. That's right under substitute's 40. So Alakazam going with substitute, hoping body slam forces a second hit to take it out, and then a third hit to have to eliminate it. But it just gets to the 40 that it needs to break the substitute. So now Alakazam unprotected at 19 HP, going with recover here. Trying to play the long game. Meganium fully paralyzed, that could be a big break for Alakazam. Now it can start putting up its defense last quite a while. Body slam, will it break this substitute? No! Well, because in with a substitute and 59. Deciding to attack for once. And it hits right on the edge of 50% for Meganium. 82 left out of 165. Another psychic. Down to eight! So Meganium can't hang on to use Sunny Day. Don't know if it's planning anything. It could have used Synthesis here, except I don't think it gets another turn to attack. Alakazam can put it away before then. And there we have it. Now it's 20 and 0. 
Alakazam with a substitute, only one or two HP left on it, and 59 HP beyond that. And it has to face Blissey! The ultimate defensive creation. Alakazam going with a Thunder Wave to put a fork in any pins Blissey may have. Here comes a Blizzard. If it hits, the substitute's gone. It does hit. Of course, Alakazam can't be frozen as long as it has that substitute up. So that's good news for it. And another substitute. Of course, it survives that. It goes down to 19. Another Blizzard. Miss. Like we said back way in the first battle, Blizzard's accuracy isn't what it used to be. It misses as often as Thunder does and always did. Now Alakazam obviously recovering back so it can continue the substitute game. Egg Bomb from Blissey. I don't know what the point of putting Egg Bomb on a Blissey is. Low attack into low defense, but it's not the kind of situation you want to have to count on Egg Bomb for. And it doesn't even break the substitute. Another psychic! This time to Blissey. It's for only 62. And a thunder! Looks like this Blissey doesn't want to put up any proactive defense on its own. It wants to rely on Blissey's innate defensive abilities. Well, Alakazam actually ends up being the wall here. Not normally something you th think of when you have Alakazam taking on Blissey in a match. Another Thunder. Oh, the substitute is still intact. Took an Egg Bomb and a Thunder. Alakazam recovering, Blissey crippled by paralysis. Leftovers take her back to full health. Another Psychic hits for about as much. And Thunder... Miss! Now it looks like Alakazam's going on offense, possibly for good. Down to 234. So it takes quite a while to wear down Blissey. Here comes Psychic. Critical! 128! So that could go a good way toward taking Blissey out. For good and going to 21-0, hopefully sooner than later, because those leftovers just put a big dent in everything. Another psychic. Blissey, Thunder, missed again! Back over a hundred. Now Alakazam hit Psychic here, and with the Leftovers recovery, that's still not enough to have Blissey survive another Psychic. So even if fully paralyzed... Well, it looks like seven Psychics that have to bring Blissey down. Alakazam proving it can live up to that task. Quite a strange battle, but there you have it. 21 and 0 for the blue team. And all that's left is the final.
And the finalist is Pedro the Pokemaniac. Here be dragons, or at least as far as you can put dragons in this game against this blue team that seems inevitable to win everything. It went 24-0 in the Prime Cup, even with the level disadvantage. Now will it go 24-0 against teams that have had three years to evolve beyond it? Gengar leads off against... Charizard. Charizard has Earthquake. I don't think that's lethal at Gengar, but it takes a good bite out of it. Gengar Thunderbolt. Critical! Oh, does that drop it at once? Yes, thanks for the critical hit. Who's coming out next for Pedro? Opponent number 23. My champ! Gengar Psychic. That won't be enough to take out my champ unless it's also a critical it isn't. Earthquake! Oh, of course, my champ a lot higher attack than Charizard. Is that enough to take down Gengar? No, it's not. Psychic! 23 and 0! Only one opponent separates the blue team from yet another perfect win. And it will be Kingdra! With Kingdra! Quite effective on defense, naturally, just by virtue of its types. Gengar deciding it can't win in the straight-on clash, given its low health, so in comes Chansey. There's a serve. Probably would have taken out Gengar if it had the chance. Hits for a hit, it's the Chansey. Only 44 and then leftovers. Recovers back 24 of it. So a net gain of only 20 from Surf. Here you see this Chansey a lot more defense oriented with its moves than the Blissey was in the last battle. Dragon Breath. Thunder Wave. And now Chansey will start going first from here on. That Dragon Breath with a net gain of only 5 damage after the Leftovers recovery. Looks like Chansey's starting to minimize. Putting up what's supposed to be the impenetrable defense. Granted, that's not the defense stat. But it is the overall aspect of playing defense. That's what Chansey does best, especially now here in this futuristic setting where its special attack is no longer anywhere near what it used to be. Dragon Breath from Kingdra still keeps hitting. Still doesn't paralyze at all. Chansey minimizing. Another Minimize! Fancy three seismic tosses away from taking out Kingdra, but it wants to taunt Kingdra by putting up the most impervious defense you can possibly muster. And another Minimize!
Ninja seemingly unable to do anything anymore. Leftovers have already long since recovered Chansey back to full health. Now this will be the sixth Minimize. Thanks to that Bright Powder to go along with it, there's now a 70% chance of Chansey to dodge any attack that comes that way, except of course Swift and Faint Attack and things like that. Seismic Toss number one! Now two Seismic Tosses away from victory. Here comes the Dragon Breath. It's through all the Minimizes and the dra and the Bright Powder and gets a Paralyzed. Here comes Surf. That misses even though it clearly looks like Chansey submerged. As she's going out for a swim and not taking any damage from that water. Who knows? Crazy things have happened in this stadium. Seismic toss number two. Now Chansey just one more attack away from sealing a 24-0 win for the blue team. Kendra going for Swagger. Nothing. Can't see nothing doing either. Fully paralyzed. Another Swagger. Another miss. I guess that's to be expected when you've got a 73% chance of missing. Another Swagger. And missed again! And here's the final seismic toss to put away Kingdra. So the blue team undefeated, no Pokemon lost. And it comes out victorious in this Poke Cup three years after it's supposed to have come from its own time. Now there's just the award ceremony. This is your makeshift announcer out.